we saw the Vols from the SEC go up north. That, that kind of popped off the page at me, seeing an SEC team go up to Pittsburgh, play this game, but still winning the game 34-27. The Vols went off as minus six-point road favorites, lands right there next to the number. Odds makers doing a great job. Tennessee barely covers here by a point, 63 being okay. the total. So both side and total right next to the number. Uh, hold on. Let me just – I have to vent about this game here because this was – this was one of my best bets of the week was the over in this game because Tennessee's offense this year is going to be like Ole Miss offense last year. They're going to rack up a ton of points and a ton of yards week in and week out. This was a game where they scored 41 points in the first half, drew 41 points and a total of 66, which is what I got it at earlier in the week when it, when it first came out and I thought the number was going to go up. And I kept telling everybody, guys, if you see Tennessee totals sitting in the mid sixties, jump on them. Because in two or three weeks, those, those numbers are going to be in the high 60s, low 70s when they start playing, you know, some bad SEC defenses uh, like, like the likes of Missouri and everybody else because they can score. This game was trending that way the whole way. And I had Pittsburgh plus six and a half, too. This was the real kicker of the whole thing. Pittsburgh did wonders for the total because they were scoring early and often. And I'm sitting here watching this game unfold and going exactly the way I planned it. This is exactly the game script I thought how it was going to play out because Tennessee's defense is also really bad. And then what happened in the third quarter? Keaton Slovis gets hurt, goes out of the game, um, and we don't even know if he's coming back this week. And I don't know who that backup quarterback was, Patty, Burnt Patty, Patty Melt, whatever he was. Because yeah. as soon as he came in the game, Pittsburgh couldn't do anything offensively at all. And the pace of the game just froze. And it just stopped on both accounts. Um, and Tennessee started to pick it back up and scored a couple of, uh, you know, a garbage touchdown there. And then all of a sudden I actually turned the game off thinking I'm going to lose Pittsburgh and I'm going to lose the over. And I was ticked off. And then lo and behold, what happens, Drew? Oh, overtime. Whoa, we got life here. You're telling me if I get a touchdown and then another touchdown, I'm going to get to 67 and cover this thing in OT. Yay. Pittsburgh scores a touchdown. I'm like, I mean, Tennessee scores a touchdown. I'm like, yes, here we go. I need one touchdown. One touchdown. Let's go to double OT. <sighs> Patty melt. Patty melt. And that's what happened. And I got burnt on this game big time. I was so aggravated because, again, it was one of those things where the handicap was spot on for the total. And Pittsburgh was the right side, I think, genuinely. And the way the game unfolded until Keaton Slovis got hurt, Pittsburgh was going to stay in that thing and keep it close the whole way. Their offense just had nothing left. They had nothing left. They couldn't throw the ball. And Tennessee's pass defense is terrible. Ter as, as Charles Buck would say, it's terrible. As Stephen A. Smith would say, terrible. It's bad, okay? It's yeah. really bad. So, uh, unfortunately, this game didn't go my way. But I think those are telling signs for Tennessee. They're going to score a lot, and they're going to give up a lot.